Hello everyone, this is Richard Cespedes, and we're here to play Super Star Wars The Empire Strikes Back for the SNES. Right there. This is an awesome game. Childhood game, just like many games I upload. Classic awesome game. Classic awesome franchise game and franchise movie. A long time ago in a galaxy far, far away. Star Wars. This game is just one of those uh, games that um, I remember playing as a kid. Specifically, um, there was a moment when uh, I would go to a family, family member's house. And they'll be having um, like a cookout or, or like a party or whatever, and uh, they would just be um, they would have the Super Nintendo in their room, you know, and uh, they had a uh, Street Fighter and this game, and I think I remember um, Indiana Jones, Super Mario World. So like they had a lot of awesome games, you know. This game was the one that I loved playing the most, stood out the most. Every time I went to their house, I played this game. This game where I just fell in love with it, and I'm so glad that they bought it. This game is uh, one of those rare NES games just captured my heart. Like most of the NES games captured my heart, but this game was just the one that just uh, um, got me so involved in SNES. I didn't have one. At the time when I was playing it in the in the house during the party, when I would visit, I would um, I'd play it once in a while. But it wasn't until I started playing the Super NES playing this game that I started to realize, hey, you know, um, I could buy a Super NES system. So I begged my mom, told her I wanted it. She was very impressed by the graphics and the music and the sounds, and. Within a year later, she got me one. This level right here is one that I remember the most. Return of the Jedi was another game that I loved too. Jump right on his back. Went through all that just to get to my little animal. And all that trouble, all those big old huge snowballs trying to crush me just to get right on, right to this little clip right here. And the little animals all bobbing his head, boop, 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 looking around, left and right, left and right, like dancing. Now we're in a blizzard. I like the old films even more than, you know, um, than the newer ones, the early new millennium ones. The ones that George Lucas made before the other remakes that they're gonna do now. The other other remakes. Which I saw the picture of Han Solo is more younger, more of a bigger nose kind of character guy. I mean I don't want to be criticizing people's features, but he does have a big old damn schnazza. Which I I think it works pretty well, you know, it looks, I, I think it'll work very well. But I don't know if the movie will actually be as uh, grand and as uh, epically cool and classic as the original first three made by a very young George Lucas.
lots of secrets in this game just like how you saw that one uh, I was standing on the air right below the cliff right there too and those are some awesome little secrets that they had in this game I love this gun Floor is breaking behind me. I always love the puppets of the first Star Wars films, too, you know. They didn't have much, you know, to bring out George Lucas' vi vision. You know, I'm pretty sure he had a very vast vision, and all he had was uh, stop motion animation and, pu and live action puppets. You know, so like they had to really put a lot of money and effort to bring the vast, huge scale of uh, George Lucas' imagination to reality. You know, but it was all worth it. Unlike now, where like, I mean, being a CGI anima uh, animator is technically difficulty, difficulty, difficult. But uh, back then, you had to use physical, um, with your hands, you had to build the puppets and build the uh, the stages and uh, and like, I mean, it it, it really came out. Um, it was a better era, like I said, it's more innocent era. And nowadays, people have seen the plots. People already know what to expect. They know what Star Wars is, you know. And just like a lots, lots of films nowadays, I'm surprised that filmmaking is still around. Because I mean, uh, how, how in the world are you? How can you be a filmmaker nowadays? Like really, it's unrealistic now. Because the general audience is smarter than they were 20 years ago. The general audience was more wowed by practically almost any film that came out in theaters because they did, they did not know the movie magic of building puppets and stages you know and and, and on top of that they were not unaware or not too familiar with the, the plots and story writing and screenwriting of films you know like not everybody knows that you know the good guy wins in the superhero movies you know um love stories it's always about the male chasing the girl or having difficulties in her family and at the end of the film the the they come back together so like in the era that we live in everything is just so much more limiting you know because the the general audience is smarter than what the filmmakers give them credit for like smarter even than the filmmakers I mean, subconsciously, the film uh, the filmmakers don't realize it, but a lot of the audience knows already about camera angles and how to capture camera angles and how to create lighting and how to uh, make a scene work and how the subtle nuances of an emotional scene should be. You know, I mean, they're they're at that level where they just know. And like a lot of films, like I'm 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 just ranting on, but like I mean, a lot of films, um, they already um. They can basically almost predict 25% or 50% in the film, whatever film it is, sci-fi or whatever. The general audience nowadays in New Millennium can predict the outcome of where the film is going. What's going to happen to the hero? What's going to happen to the lost child? What's going to happen to the villain? Whatever. You know? And so, like, I'm very, I'm, I'm very shocked that, like, a lot of that film filmmaking is even around anymore. Because there's no wow factor, there's no genuine wow factor. Because back in the day, things were more genuine. Audience, audience members, moviegoers were more gullible. I'm sorry for the lack of a better word, but they're less gullible and they're more wowed, and they felt the magic of filmmaking. 
Because everything was hush hush secret secret, you know? And then on top of that, the modern era keeps on remaking films. You know, they keep on remaking uh, films. And it's like, you know, come on. You know, they keep on remaking old films. And now they're going to make a Ghostbusters, you know, with with complete cast of women. Which I think is different and might turn out okay. I'm not too sure. And they're going to do Gremlins. And uh, they already did Ninja Turtles. And like they did Robocop and Ninja, Tur Ninja Turtles and Robocop didn't turn out that well. And like now they want to do re redo now. Okay. Now the rant is going back to Star Wars. Now we're talking about Star Wars. Now they're going to remake Star Wars. You know, um, well not remake. They're going to, um, it's going to be the last few chapters, I guess. That's what I heard from or whatever they're going to, what the hell they're going to do. But either way, the franchise itself is tired already. And I think that logically... For, for the love of God, and for the love of filmmaking and creativity, and for the love of the respect of the franchise itself, they should just end it with the three episodes and just end it and not continue it because it's just like uh, Michael Myers, like they remade Michael Myers with goddamn Buster Rhymes doing a goddamn roundhouse to Michael Myers, and that was just unnecessary, you know. Like filmmaking reached a low for um, the horror world reached a whole new low when Michael Myers got roundhouse by mother freaking Buster Rhymes. You know that was completely unnecessary. That that was a whole new. No, this this boss right here, this boss is badass. I remember him distinctively. He's awesome. I can say that probably these bosses, the NES 90s bosses, are probably more impressive than even the bosses now. I, I, I don't know, maybe I'm just t talking crazy talk, but they were more than necessary back then. It's awesome. But like, I mean, you just keep on remaking everything, and like, eventually, we're going to remake everything to the point to where like we're not going to have nothing else to remake. And I think that that's going to be the end of filmmaking, is when we run out of things to remake. And run out of things to um, run out of things to sequel and prequel and make sagas of and trilogies of and keep on going and dragging on. Uh, um, you know, uh, I don't want to say any names. Uh, <coughs> Fast and Furious. <coughs> you know, um, how many Fast and Furious goddamn you know movies do we need? Three was good. Now that now it's just dragging on. I mean, come on, you know. If, you know, f filmmaking I think was already passing away in the '90s, but there was still some hard and great films there still. But filmmaking, I think that you, you can quote me on this. Filmmaking will officially pass away and die, and hopefully have a rebirth when it dies give it a rest for a couple of, you know, like a decade or two, but it, it'll pass away when we when we run out of remakes to remake, or old films to remake, or old ideas, or books, or comics, or old movies to remake, and when we run out of sequels from the remakes, or prequels from the remakes, or the prequel or the prequel of the remakes, you know, or the prequel or the sequel of the prequel, or whatever the hell, you know, <laughs> it's just ridiculous, man. It's, it really is. It's ridiculous. Unnecessary. But anyways, this game is awesome. Sorry I have to rant on. I just want to talk about it for a little bit. But this game is awesome. Oh, that's a big old damn boulder. God dang. Talk about unnecessary, man. I would have got crushed. Hmm, this looks familiar.
This is a real nicely designed level. One of the things I want to talk about too, I'll talk about too, about this game is that uh, just like the richness of the 16 bits, you know, they really took advantage of uh, just uh, how the the bullets come out of the gun, the way they interact with the environment, the little spherical um, ricochet, you know, as you can see there. The, the, the design of the hero, uh, the, anim the animation, the fluidity of the animation, the design of the monsters, which were which did not appear in the movie, but they had to create new monsters for the game, but still, you know, they're awesome. And I don't remember in the movie this big old damn long cave that he has to traverse to just get to the other side, you know. He's almost spelunking his ass around there, man. Getting sucked up by the wind. Or Han Solo's. Or uh, Luke Skywalker's force. Sorry about that. Not Han Solo. A little snow dog there. Great design to the monsters and everything. Great design, level design. Snow, everything's great. One other thing that I want to talk about in terms of films, since the Star Wars is going to be released very soon, within a year or a couple of months, or I don't know. Hope it turns out good. But anyways, I think that my theory for filmmaking is that they should um, let filmmaking um, um, go away for a little bit. Let the general audience, let the people let the moviegoers um, develop a hunger you know let them let them develop the need for movies you know let them want you back you know that's my message to filmmakers let them want you back you know um, go away for a little bit you know I I would recommend now this is kind of crazy but I would recommend that filmmaking stop for a little bit like only having two films a year or something like that. And now I'll, rec I'll, I'll recommend something like that. Because back in the day, with Gone with the Wind and all that, back in the era, a little bit before and around that same era, filmmaking uh, movies, there was less movies coming out. You know, and the moviegoer was again. It was a better era because the moviegoer was much more gullible, and it was a much more um, innocent era for, for movies and TV shows or whatever. So, like, we need to um, reestablish that innocence and that gullibleness in the hearts and souls of the moviegoer, at least in America, if not the world. You know, so that so that people will can miss you again, so people can miss movies and miss actors and miss cinema so that they can miss it again because like the film industry is oversaturated with like you know um paramount pictures and nickelodeon and 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 uh, and um you know all these other uh dreamworks these movie studios you know they're just oversaturating trying to find scripts and they're like multiple movies coming out from the same studio you know and it's like they're oversaturating themselves you know they're just putting out too much product and they're not even getting that much back because their product is that is there, there's no quality to the product there's no quality there's no heart you know and it and, and, and it makes people and it makes the it makes people the movie goer tired it makes them tired because they're, they're just getting this half-ass CGI, cartoony, child, um, half-ass, sci-fi, crappy-ass, um, the new Terminator that's coming out. 
the fifth the fifth one you know that the the um the fifth terminator is gonna come out it's like i mean what i mean i mean come on now you know i mean it has it has uh schwarzenegger in it and it's like uh he's already old although they made the script work because schwarzenegger is old and he's fighting against um helping you know he's, he's like a more of a helper more of a hero you know which makes the story different but when you look at the film itself it just looks like a cheap sci-fi movie it, you know and it's just like they just like almost like uh, like part three how part three was it's just a cheap movie you know and uh it's, it's gonna hurt the franchise even more disrespecting terminator you know and Arnold Schwarzenegger is not going to save uh, Terminator. He's not going to save the movie. Uh, I can tell you that right now. Whee! He's going on a big adventure. Oh, that's beautiful. Look at that. Nice icy ocean. This is an awesome planet. Look at that. Look at that background. Look at the design of the background. That's beautiful. Nice blue water, clean, crisp water. Ooh, boss time. It's a robot this time. So like, yeah, like movie filmmaking should stop for a while. It should only produce a um, certain, uh, certain amount of films per year. So that the general audience can want you back, you know. The heart grows fonder, fonder at a distance. You know, you don't want people to be too familiarized with filmmaking. You want that magic to be there, and the only way to capture that magic is to be is to go away for a while, so that so the audience can miss you, can miss movies. They should do that for themselves. Go away for a while, so the audience can miss you, and then come back harder and stronger than ever with some awesome scripts and some awesome movies, and you'll recapture. A whole new golden era I guarantee that or at least develop they should have like a little um they should they should have like an agreement like hey okay now one year Paramount releases two films next year DreamWorks releases two films like every year one studio releases two films one studio every year releases two films for that year that's it no other studio releases films. Just one studio does. Something like that. And the next studio, DreamWorks releases one. And then after that, another studio releases two more. And all those See, because a lot of the studios are going to lose money within that year. But I mean, if they learn to manage their damn money correctly, they wouldn't need money. You know? They should be responsible with their money. But at the same time, it'll help people to kind of miss filmmaking and miss movies. And it'll give script writers and directors a chance to to um create something more thoughtful and more heart okay it's enough of that so this is a this is a awesome part of level two this character must be tired as hell to be going through all this These are very long levels. Stage clear.
It's almost like a chase. I also like the way they use that lightsaber as well, life bar.
Alright, got to that. Kinda looks like Rocketeers. Those guys. Came out swinging. Uh, Darth Vader head right there. Imagine how difficult these levels are. I mean, these levels are very long levels and very detailed levels. A huge team, a dedicated team. Lucas Arts, that's what they were. Awesome. I love my little pistol.
that one. Holy poly box. That one. Now we're on top of the building. Ah, here we go. Oh yeah. Too easy. Down you go. Here we are. Now we're gonna play as this guy. Everybody knows this guy. Little change of pace, you know. Play the different characters. It makes it fun. I always like the way he rolls around, you know, instead of like. Just sliding kind of rolls. But I think this Han Solo is, uh, a better Han Solo than the new one, I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty damn sure. Harrison Ford just, he just lived the role. He also is an awesome video game character in this game.
Alright everybody, thank you all for watching, this is Ricky Cespedes, and I have to end the video right here, very sorry, but I will continue with the last two uploads, there will be three uploads total of Super Star Wars The Emperor Strikes Back, I'll end the video right here, thank you all for watching, this is Ricky Cespedes, I hope you love this first part of Super Star Wars the Empire Strikes Back for the SNES. Thank you, and God bless. I'll be playing just a little bit more before I close the video. Take it easy.